Uh, I hope you'll edit this. I have no idea. Really? What, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll let you get involved in it. So uh, we'll Kelly's uh, the pro. She'll turn whatever I say into something good. <laughs> okay, we're here with Jim Palmer, 20 game winner in 1971. Jim, how did you do it and how did you like uh, posing for those underwear ads? Totally kidding. I'm sure you Yeah, did yeah. Fun. Well, well, those, you know, made a lot of money doing that. <laughs> now I do the money store and vitamins, so, uh, you know, all good. Okay, okay, good. Warm me up. Yeah. <laughs> One of four 20 game winners That's in 1970. 70. And you know, the ironic thing about that what? is when I first met Bob Ferguson, the first question he asked me after he learned my name was, can you name the other three pitchers? Uh, Dave um, McNally. McNally. The one guy who just died or killed himself. Pat Dobson, he was also a Detroit pitcher. That's right. And uh, I think it was Mike Cuellar. Yeah, Cuellar, thank you. Yeah, I, I, and I, I got I, was big I got this. three of the four. That's pretty good. You know. That's pretty good. So. Um, so, um, all right, so ready? Okay. All right, we're here with Jim Palmer. He's the CEO of Lowe's Campbell Ewald. Jim, thanks for inviting us into your place pre-launch. Today, I guess, is the last day you moving out of the uh, old digs in Warren. Yeah, this is the last day you'll see it sort of pristine. It'll be almost 500 people moving through the doors Tuesday morning, and uh, we're very excited to be back in Detroit. How how long were you in Warren? Was the headquarters in Warren? A there? About 40 years of our wow. almost 103 year uh, history. Uh, we were obviously founded in Detroit, spent the vast majority of the early years in Detroit. And then when GM moved their Chevrolet marketing division to Warren, we built our own facility and, you know, we're there for almost 40 years. That's uh, fantastic. I, I, I've called on it uh, for many years now. Coming down to Detroit, we have 500 people moving to Detroit, moving into these beautiful facilities where you have a Twitter feed of your clients uh, in the backdrop here. I can't imagine this not being a beacon for young people to want to come and work here in Detroit. It's such a happening spot. Well, uh, Greg, you're exactly right. I mean, and that was part of the reason we chose to come to Detroit, because Detroit is becoming very vibrant, and we're a talent-driven industry. You know, the thing that we have most to offer to clients is kind of out-of-the-box thinking brought to you by people that are creative, and they're drawn to an urban atmosphere. They're they're drawn to cities, and Detroit, I think, now has a capability. And with us here, we can take it, take advantage of that. So that was really part of our, our thinking all along. Yeah, we're, we're real proud of it. Um, in terms of um, what you are doing now, you have the Cadillac. I was just at the Cadillac launch, uh, yeah. the ATS's Motor Trends uh, Car of the Year 2014. It was a very happening, cutting-edge video uh, in the background talking about the evolution of the logo and kind of uh, showing that, and that's your work, is it not? Yes, yes, the launch, uh, the launch video, a lot of the launch materials, uh, all our work. Um, actually, CTS is uh, Motor Trends Car of the thank Year. You. The I, ATS is North America's uh, Car of the Year last year. Yes, thank So, you. Um, yes, that work was all ours. There's a, tr a very vibrant video that we did to uh, unveil the ATS Coupe, which is the coupe coming out of the original launch of the sedan last year right and speaking of north american car of the year i'm holding a magazine here detroiter uh, on a roll shows mark royce automobile of the year uh, north american car of the year was the uh, chevrolet corvette motor trend car of the year is the cts we've come a long way from uh five years ago where we had this hell on wheels five years later where general motors uh CEO was paraded out before Congress and, and the Senate. Um, the President of the United States got involved in uh, personnel decisions. And one day you picked up the phone and got a phone call that after 90 plus years, Chevrolet was no longer going to be a Campbell Ewald account. How devastating was that not only for you personally, but for knowing all your employees? Did you, did you have a concern for their future, their livelihood, and how are you going to tell them? And how I couldn't imagine taking that kind of hit. The largest advertiser in the world just pulled out. Well, I think you captured it. I mean, uh, we were uh, devastated would probably be the right term. Um, I was not the CEO at the time, but I recall watching Bill Ludwig, our CEO, 
actually tearing up as he delivered the message to a gathering of very dedicated uh, Campbell Ewald employees who had served many of them, most of their careers, the Chevrolet brand and General Motors. It was devastating. That said, um, you know, those sort of crises, those sort of situations where your back is against the wall is a time when you can do great things. Look at General Motors with Mark Royce who developed cars that are now being renowned as best in the industry, best in class, global platforms. Um, it's a wonderful time and I think that adversity drove General Motors and it's driven us to become a better, smarter, more uh, uh, creative, more inventive, more innovative firm. Thus this unbelievable space we're about to move into. It's all part of that plan. But we, yes, we had our backs against the wall and we responded. It's, uh, you know, now the tears are coming back to my eyes, but they're tears of joy, not tears of, you know, terrible feelings from a calamity that really no one wanted to happen. But look at what's happening now. I got to say, Jim, that is very powerful. Um, I remember uh, calling on Campbell Ewald after the loss of Chevrolet, and I, I just looked at it like, you're still around? But then I look on the wall, you have this portfolio of really strong clients. You survived a torpedo to the Titanic somehow, and you didn't go down. And now, with great um, accolades and applause, I understand there's a big story coming out, as, as it should be. You're moving 500 people down here to Detroit, and they're going to have a livelihood and be part of the fabric of the city. And one of its most iconic uh, brands, uh, Cadillac. That's got to be. That's got to make you feel just like you said, tears of joy. Yes, it's. Uh, you know, I mean, when you when you're in the fight to bring this back, you know, you don't look up a lot. Thank God, because you need to stay at it. But I think it is a time to pause and say, wow, you know, we really had a situation. The tipping point could have tipped us over, closed a venerable national and international ad agency. We were able to hold grip on somehow, and I credit our people at this firm uh, for holding on, collecting themselves, and saying, no, we're not going to take this as a death blow. We're going to take it as a rallying cry, and we did it. And uh, frankly, probably just now, in the last few months, we're starting to look up and feel some of the fruits of our labor. So all good. And Uva Ellinghaus, um, who we just uh, interviewed, uh, the chief marketing officer at Cadillac, um, you know, as I as I softballed him, you're paid to say it's good cattle, it's good product that uh, the reason people come yeah. back. But he was very adamant. He goes, it's not so much the distribution of the content; it's, it's the content itself and the creative, and yeah. that's what you uh, you're specializing in bringing to the table here. Yeah. Can you talk about some of the ideas that you have coming out for like uh, for future products or just kind of the mojo, the way you're you're looking at uh, evolving the Cadillac brand. Well, look, first of all, I want to say Uva is such a welcomed, uh, you know, addition to this team. He's bright. He brings great experience in the luxury car category. Uh, some of the things that we're looking for him to do is really lead us into that global uh, Cadillac that we're, the, the brand is pining to be and wants to be, and we think he's going to get us there. And he's right. It is about the content. It isn't particularly about the delivery uh, screen, the many screens that you can experience this. Um, you know, I would only say that what we're going to be is we're going to be a consistently uh, proven luxury uh, provider in the sense that our behavior, the way we act, the way we talk about ourselves, the way we position ourselves will be consistent, thoughtful, and right for the market. And I can't really go much beyond that. Yeah. But I, I think because I don't want to tip I sure, mean we have course. some no, we have some I'm general plans, but look for us to be uh, calm and thoughtful yes. and deliberate about how we take this tremendous car brand forward uh, into this uh, competitive atmosphere. And we've already shown some progress with a, a pickup of one percent market share last year. Yes. The first time and frankly, many years for Cadillac, we see that continuing, but we know that the uh, competitors are not standing still. Uh, we've got the people in place, the product in place, and, you know, let's face it, the economy is improving, and as it improves, we believe we're going to have that window at our back also. 
And I'm not going to belabor this point, Jim, but I, I, we talked about this, the best times, worst of times. I was sitting next to a GM executive on June 8th, 2009, when he gets a text. He says, this is it. I said, what's it? He said, tomorrow they're going to file. To go from that and to not give up on the city and then to come back and have car of the year, improved market share, uh, is an amazing turnaround story. I don't know that anybody really understands how that happened. Um, people gave up. Uh, there were white collar guys looking for jobs at Home Depot. Suddenly, Detroit's a place to move and live. Real estate values have come back. If you could point to one time during this this uh, uh, the last five years that you stuck you know stuck together and said, "No, we're going to get through this." If there was a, if there was a moment that you had to pick, did anything come to mind? Well, yeah, I, I'm going to tell you the way, what really uh, solidified it for me, and I'm going to go into an advertising story, and not our ad, but um, look, we were all laboring to bring this around, and any time you are in the middle of a labor, uh, you're not looking up, you're not looking around, you're getting discouraged, you're pushing back, you're doing all the things necessary to get you know over the next hump, and then you see the next hump appear, and this sort of thing. But I have to say the uh, M&M ad that Chrysler did, uh, on the Super Bowl uh, three years ago, um, sort of uh, just solidified it for me that this is a town, a very interesting town in the sense that it's worth, it's worth bringing back. We've got so much history, so many people still here and coming here, which is great news, that believe that this can be a special town doing special things. I mean, we led the world in the 50s we think we can be part of that turnaround. This is a big time worldwide destination and that is worth saving and that's why we stuck it out. Uh, that's a, that's my, certainly for me too. As a Detroiter, I felt the same way. I felt uh, unbelievable pride. Now you're here located um, at Ford, uh, you're attached to Ford Field. You've got this tremendous facility. We're gonna do just a little walk around tour uh, in a second. Uh, other exciting things happening at GM, Mary Barra coming on, she's the first uh, woman CEO uh, ever hired. Um, a lot of exciting things, and GM, the number two advertiser in the world. As a Detroiter, I take a lot of pride in this city being relevant, people having to pay homage, come here, deal with us, because we have a, a, a relevant brand. It, do you feel similar? Oh, absolutely. That's why, back to the, the comeback. I mean, this is big business here. You know, we hire people at Cambly, while I often say, just understand, this is the big leagues. We're, this is one of the largest corporations in America, and we represent it, other major brands that are global companies that make an impact on people's lives every day. So just understand, this is a serious place to work, fun, inventive, collaborative, all that. But this is not the minor leagues. This is where big business is done, big decisions are made, big bets are made, and so we so we when you come into this office and you work for a company like General Motors, you know, bring your A game because that's what it's about. And Jim, the last thing I'll say in this, uh, I've known other CMOs who uh, left town, uh, went to work for other successful brands in Chicago. When the sun came out, they came back. Yeah. You stayed here the whole time and you, you stuck by your 500 uh, employees. Uh, you, you kept their jobs intact. I still don't know how. You kept morale up enough to where it's really legitimate that you guys are on a serious, serious roll. And it looks like it's going to be that way into the definite future. You'll be able to attract people back here. And for all those reasons and all the other things you did to make this very happening place, we consider you a hero of Detroit. I mean that sincerely. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. Appreciate it, Greg. Yeah. Okay, great. We're done. Good.